All right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday, finishing up the year of tastings here, man. It's late October, and you know what that means. We shut things off in November. We have a lot of catch-up work to do. We'll probably have what I drank yesterday for the whole month of November. Uh, we still got some tastings going on. We'll cover those, but getting ready for the holidays here. I'm glad to see your friend Sean from Palmaz. This is one of the most exciting new wineries to hit Napa Valley the last decade. Dr. Palmaz invented the stint, and this gave him international notoriety and a lot of cash. And, man, that's what it takes to make a first-class winery in Napa Valley or anywhere like that. You know, the dirt there is $250,000 an acre. And then he's developed this project from the ground up or the ground down in this matter because he's 16 stories into a mountain. And everything is gravity flow here. They've got, um, you know, a tank for every single block on the vineyard. There's 24 blocks, 24 tanks, and they ferment everything separately. And they're... You know, Mia Klein is there making the wine. She develops some new techniques, like when they rack the wines, they rack them from the barrel that they're in to a stainless steel bottle bar barrel, and then clean the barrel out, and then rack it back into that barrel so they never see a different barrel, just in case there's something funky going on in that barrel. You know, it doesn't get translated to any of the other wines. These guys have taken every step they possibly can to make the best wine. And you know what? I could see the writing was on the wall from day one. This was going to be a hot property. We have been sending people to this winery to see it. I've been there myself, but everyone that comes back just raves about it. And uh, the Paul Mass family, very gracious hosts. A lot of times they take the time themselves to give the tour of their property. So just an incredible story in Napa. If you guys are traveling to Napa, you know, let us try to make arrangements. You want to always do it in advance. These guys are, you know, they fill up very quickly. And uh, like I said, just an incredible place to see. And the wines, top notch. Some of the best wines that I've had every year. The Cedar Knoll, which wasn't here, is something we always have in the store. Oh, sorry, where's it at? Oh, we ran out of it. Sorry, but it'll be back in tomorrow along with the Palmas. And the Chardonnay this year, one of the best Chardonnays that they've made at this property, even though... 2011, a very difficult year. It just goes to show what you can do when you have the money and the time to treat your vineyard uh, like these guys do. They still made a very good Chardonnay here. Sean says it's the best one ever. I don't know if it's the best one ever, but really good. They cold ferment this wine in barrel at 45 degrees. Wet toast the barrels so they're not overly toasty. A lean and clean style. 50% of the fruit is from their estate and 50% is from the Hyde Vineyard. So this is the only one that gets purchased fruit. And 406 packs for uh, sale outside the winery. They, they keep as, as much at the winery. So uh, only 412 bottle cases made of this wine. Really uh, a nice Asian pear and fresh apple kind of fruit to it. Good hand of fresh earth minerality some lemon balm, citrus, and a really distinct minerally earthy note to this wine, showing on the second day, almost like a dark cocoa uh, note to this wine, really unique. I don't think I've had a in Chardonnay like it this year. A very fine and elegant style Chardonnay with hints of that vanilla bean spice and lemon zest, a good amount of minerality, leaving into a tongue-tingly finish, an excellent bottle of Chardonnay. And uh, like I said, a great effort for this 2011 vintage. The 2009 Palmas Napa Cab, this wine's got 1%. Petite Verdot in the blend, just uh, shy of 50%, comes from the block at 1,400 foot elevation, all vol volcanic rock here. Like I said, there's 24 blocks on the vineyard, there's 24 tanks, so everything gets fermented separately, and then they go and pick and choose which ones they want to put in their top wine. Everything else goes in the Cedar Knoll, which is why the Cedar Knoll, to me, one of the best values in Napa Valley. It's like $45 a bottle, and um, yeah, it's just all the stuff they make it into Paul Mass, which is 124.50 a bottle, which this wine is. I mean, 2009 is a great vintage, but this wine it just gets better and better every year. A very good amount of juicy fruit to the nose, cassis, black currants, sweet tobacco spice, dark chocolate, along with some loamy, earthy notes. Really concentrated fruit at the forefront here, but those loamy, earthy notes really starting to come in on the second day, which is a sign you want to age this wine, let everything come into balance here. Really dark cher cherry, currant, and cassis berry fruit showing on the palate with fine with ripe round tannins and uh, really firm though this wine's still very young lovely freshness and richness in this wine but lovely balance also this wine's got everything and in proportion here a textbook napa valley cabernet with a long finish this is most excellent juice 124.50 great stuff again this year from palmas all right i'm your host andrew lampasoni signing off for the wine watch saying remember always drink the good stuff first